بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یونٹ نمبر ٹویلو مین ہو چین دا ورلڈ لک ایٹ دا گیون پکچر یو کین سی اے فالنگ ایپل ہیو یو اوور تھاٹ دیٹ وائی ڈز این ایپل فال ڈاؤن ٹوڈس دا ارتھ اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ریڈ اباؤٹ دا پیپل ہو ہیو براڈ چینجز ان آر لائف آئی سیک نیوٹرین One day, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree. He was thinking about the movement of the moon. Why does the moon move in a circle and not in a straight line? Have you ever thought like this? Just then, an apple fell off the tree, down to the ground. Newton stopped thinking about the moon and began wondering about the apple. He thought, why did it not go up in the air? Why did it fall to the ground? If something is thrown up, it comes down to the ground. Why does it not stay up in the ground or go sideways? The incident set Newton's mind. He made many calculations and gave the world an amazing theory. He said that the apple fell to the ground because the earth pulled it down. The earth pulls everything to itself. He called it the gravitational force or gravity of the earth. The stars, the sun and the moon too have their gravitational force. They pulled each other and because of their gravitational force remained in their place and moved in their orbits. Newton used to watch the heavenly bodies night after night from a high tower. Isaac Newton was born in Hull's Throp. in Lincolnshire, England in 1642. He spent his childhood with his grandmother whom he loved dearly. Little Isaac was extremely clever at making working, mechanical models and toys. He made for himself a set of tools. His grandmother was very proud of his skills. The family friend advised his grandmother to apprentice him to a clockmaker. Isaac made a clock which won the admiration of all who saw it. It worked not by weights and wheels, but by drops of water. He also made a sundial. His grandmother could tell the time during the day as well as at night, outdoors or indoors. The sundial, it is said, still exists at Isaac Newton's house. Isaac did not wish to be a clockmaker. He was determined to study. He went to the University of Cambridge. He won great fame because of his theory of gravity. He was the first scientist to study light. He told the world what sunshine was made of. Newton received many honors for his scientific work. He was made a member of the British Parliament. He died in 1727 at the age of 85. Thomas Elva Edison Well, have you seen a working bulb and do you know who invented it? Today we are going to read about a person who invented this bulb for us. Thomas Elva Edison was an American scientist who invented many things. He was trying to make an electric bulb. He was sure that his electric bulb would replace candles, oil lamps and gas lights in homes and street. Here I just want you to stop and imagine life without bulbs. So, he has changed our life. He wanted to give a cheap, safe and efficient method of lighting to the people. After many difficult and lengthy experiments, he produced a satisfactory electric bulb. Now he had to convince people that his invention was better than gas lamps. He decided to install his electric lighting system over an area of one square mile in New York and proved his point. It was an expensive project. Many banks and rich citizens supported him. He employed 2,000 mechanics to produce bulbs, switches, dynamos, etc. He said, There is nothing that we can buy or that anybody else can make for us. We must build everything with our own hands. Before making the equipment, he and his team had to design it too. The gas firms opposed this project, but Addison was able to persuade house owners and factory owners to allow him to put wires in their buildings. He promised he would charge them for his services 
only if they were satisfied. Finally, 18 miles of cable was laid under New York streets. Electricity was installed in 900 buildings. What a success! At last, on 4th September 1882, everything was ready for the great test. Later, Addison said, I felt the sense of a great responsibility for unknown things might happen on turning a mighty power loose under the streets and buildings. The historic moment came. Edison gave the signal. The words of a reporter from the New York Herald described the scene as the thousands of electric lamps and hundreds of buildings throughout the area burst into a bright and mellow brilliance. A new age began with this successful experiment. Should we be thankful to him? Yes, we must be thankful to him. We should be thankful to him. And are you trying to invent something else?